Later, you were invited to uh, co-author Earl Mazo's uh, documentation of the 1968 uh, campaign. No, the, the, the book came out. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah. Earl Mazo wrote a very successful, by far the most successful, Nixon biography, political biography, in 1959, before the 1960 campaign, when it was clear that Nixon was going to run again in 1968, uh, it, it happened that I took over that project and rewrote uh, Mazo's book, and it became Mazo and Hess, a Dixon biography that came out in probably December of 67. So it was essentially a, a campaign book. Um, that that <laughs> funny thing about that book, I didn't learn at the time. Um, it had a very striking cover, which was like a black crayon outline of Richard Nixon. It was not flattering, and there was nothing the authors could do about getting Harper to change that cover. I learned later from, from Bill Sapphire's book that Nixon had a very good friend who controlled the distribution of paperback books and candies and other things in airports, on the, at least on the West Coast. And because of that cover, they, they didn't run my book. So Nixon would have been worried that you get off of the airport at LAX or someplace else, and you're surrounded by this ugly picture of Richard Nixon. So, um, but at any rate, no complaints. When that book, uh, when Nixon became president, then uh, we sold editions of that book to probably 30, to 30 languages all around the world. So the book did very well for us, including, by the way, uh, some odd, co we, we had a, a pirated edition in Taiwan that somebody, one of the Nixon advance people sent us. The Nixons had, uh, the, the USIA information had, present had a presentation copy with elephant hide that they presented to people in Vietnam. So we, we had a lot of fun, ultimately, uh, with that book. I should say another thing that happened with that book. Uh, Earl and I went up to New York to interview uh, Richard Nixon in his apartment on 62nd and 5th Avenue. Uh, and we had two tape recorders. Uh, one was a new model that had a long-lasting tape. Uh, we had that uh, sitting there on a hassock that he had. And another that I just put in under the pillows, just to not make it so obvious. Uh, we were maybe 10 minutes into the interview, and I saw the tape snap. I said, oh, well, we've got the other one going. When we got back to our hotel, the, the pillows had muffled the sound, and we came out of that interview with virtually nothing. Nixon was, it was a very good sport. We called him up and, and got the key, the, the, the key elements that he had made on, on the phone, and we did have, if ultimately, in that book, a, uh, a Nixon interview.